everyone. Uh, welcome to my channel. My name is Lizzie. Um, today I want us to talk about a subject that is uh, pretty near and dear to me. Um, I wanted to begin discussing borderline personality disorder on my channel. Um, borderline personality disorder is also known in some circles more recently as uh, self-love deficit disorder. And to start off with, I am first going to read um, from my notes verbatim the definition from the DSM, which is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual that psychologists generally use to diagnose borderline personality disorder. So I just wanted to rattle that off quickly, and then I will uh, get into some other things and some, you know, some more opinion, some more opinion-based material, and also some um, some common theory-based material that's coming out because borderline personality disorder research is, you know, pretty cutting edge. We're finding out a lot more about it. Um, the more you dig into psychology and the science of it, you will find that we actually really don't know all that much about the human brain yet, which is was quite shocking to me the more I dug into it. So um, let me just start off with the uh, definition here from the DSM criteria and definition. Uh, borderline personality disorder is defined as a pervasive pattern of instability in relationships self-image and emotion, as well as marked impulsivity beginning by early adulthood and present in a variety of contexts, as indicated by five or more of the following. Uh, chronic feelings of emptiness, emotional instability in reaction to day-to-day -day events, uh, such as intense episodic sadness, irritability, or anxiety, Frantic efforts to avoid real or imagined abandonment, and that's an important one. Um, identity disturbances or unstable self-image. Impulsive behavior. Unstable and intense personal relationships characterized by idealization and devaluation. Also known as, it, known as splitting, which is also very important. Um, recurrent suicidal behavior, gestures, or threats and also dissociative symptoms. So uh, that's just, just a really brief definition of borderline personality disorder. And now I'll get into some, uh, some more of the uh, common theories, um, some whys and some hows, and what actually manifests in the lives um, of a borderline. Um, so borderline, again, self-love deficit disorder, uh, borderlines live in a constant state of fear of abandonment. Uh, they are the ultimate chameleon. Uh, they are often very intelligent. It's often very difficult to uh, detect. They are they're excellent at uh, hiding their behaviors. Um, characterized by uh, a lot of uh, suffering, and they have been they're terrorized people. That's that's what are you know really important. Something I really want to bring to the forefront is that. Borderlines are, have been terrorized in some way. They are suffering individuals. Um, they have encountered cruelty, neglect, or malevolence in their lives, and they have gone inwards. Um, they have adopted what's known as the terrible crone persona, you know, in Jungian psychology. Um, a, a, a big characteristic, a big trait, is that they, uh, they cannot ask for what they want directly. Uh, they need to, they generally exist by using manipulation um, and half-truths to get their needs met. You know, encounters with abuse have caused them to subjugate themselves in their relationships basically for protection. Um, they don't feel, they're not confident people. They, they literally have turned, turned inwards and they really, they just cannot, not only can they not get their needs met, um, in any other way other than manipulation, oftentimes they don't even know what their needs are. Um, they've basically, you know, f from their traumas and their abuses, have learned that their feelings do not matter. You know, the people in their lives have, you know, taught them that their feelings don't matter, so they just put them aside, and a lot of times they, they grow up and they just absolutely have, they don't even know who they are. They don't even know what their wants are. They can, you know, you can't ask for something if you don't even know what it is. Um, they share traits with narcissists and covert narcissists as well. Uh, covert narcissism is quite an insidious condition. Uh, uh, if you 
come from a borderline family, I, I highly recommend that you do some research on covert narcissism because it could be very likely that uh, you invite coverts into your life quite easily uh, if that is the case. When it comes to uh, parenting, when it comes to a borderline parent, um, a borderline parent can be an extremely destructive entity to encounter. Uh, a lot of times there's a, a Freudian concept known as the eatable complex, um, basically in which the parent unconsciously eats their child. Not, not literally eat them, but they, they interrupt and disrupt normal growth patterns um, and development in their children by uh, overprotecting, by smothering, by just criticizing them into oblivion, um, which, you know, that's more the case that I'm familiar with is, you know, criticizing into oblivion. <laughs> so, uh, and the, these, these uh, borderline parents, it presents um, as an emotionally incestuous relationship between parent and child, another Freudian concept. Um, and they essentially, uh, they subconsciously cripple their children in an effort to avoid further abandonment or control. Um, the, you know, really want to hit home that the borderline's biggest issue and hurdle is the fear of abandonment. So they will go to any means necessary to control anyone around them and prevent you know, future abandonment. This behavior, this behavior easily creates uh, borderline personality disorder in the children, grandiose narcissism in the children, covert narcissism in the children, um, which those three are, they're all, branches, they're all branches of the same tree, but they do present differently depending on the child. Um, but they are, they are all branches of the same tree. And I think in just a few years, after a little bit more research, we probably will, all of those terms will probably just be molded all into one. Um, also in the, in children, it can certainly cause the self-harm, the substance abuse, uh, the self-image issues, all of those things, those, you know, easily, easily manifest in children of borderline parents. So what can you do about this if you are a child of a BPD parent? Um, there are a lot of psychologists who will tell you there's nothing you can do except for hurl medication and drugs at these children for the rest of their lives. Others say you can't fix it at all. Um, I think up and coming research would have, have certainly, up and coming research certainly has me believing that that is a preposterous notion. Uh, there are many treatments that are becoming available to these children. Cognitive behavioral therapy, dream work, breath work, um, and especially diet work. Um, I'm gonna get into this a lot, but what is coming to the forefront of psychology and in biology is that your microbiome and your gut flora inside of your body has more to do with your thoughts and your serotonin levels than was ever previously imagined. So what your parents fed you and is probably what you now feed yourself and it's really super important to keep an eye on that. <laughs> um, exposure therapy and also, I may lose some people here, but DMT therapy is coming out as massively helpful. I myself intend to go on an ayahuasca journey in the very near future, possibly even in spring. Um, so that's something I've been thinking about. Uh, but uh, just like any, any other issue of this magnitude, it's really, really important for the children of BPD parents uh, to first admit uh, and absolutely surrender to the notion that they were abused as children, even if it, if it doesn't seem like they were directly, because uh, absolutely no healing can occur, you know, until you recognize some of the things that, you know, went on in your, in your childhood. And a lot of it stems from uh, a child's inability to incorporate the negative aspects of their parents, especially when it ends up on a spectrum that's abusive as many times the child will take on, they, will, they just don't have an understanding you know, of the parent's issues and they will project their parent's negative aspects onto themselves and end up believing that they are the negative aspect and they will just erase negativity 
from their parents and they will put it all onto themselves so they will end up absorbing all the negativity and then the real problems for those children come later in life when they have not let go of those negative aspects of their parents that they have projected onto themselves. Um, and that is where the real healing work begins, is to identify where your beliefs about yourself come from. Um, because they don't call it the mother tongue for nothing. <laughs> the words, especially your mother, the words your mother speaks to you affect you in ways that even Freud hasn't even gotten to the bottom of yet. <laughs> so. So uh, I'll be going into this in a lot more detail and I will be getting into some the more like existential and woo woo as they call it aspects of this because um, you know I certainly want males and females to watch my videos but I am specifically talking to women and females and you know it's, it's really important that especially you know like in my case uh, femininity was smushed out of my life as a child. Like it was just not something that I was encouraged to develop. Uh, I was encouraged to develop only my masculine traits. Um, and that is not helpful <laughs> if you are a female. So it's really important. I would encourage any females watching this uh, to dig into what they call the divine feminine. And if, you know, males dig into what aspects of the divine, divine masculine are. Uh, I know it's a little woo-woo and new agey, but uh, we're going to be hearing a lot more about the woo-woo up, coming up in a couple of years, I feel. <laughs> I think there's uh, quite a bit more to it uh, than we ever imagined. I think it's, uh, it's quite obvious that there is uh, much more to this world, universe, and life than uh, has been presented to us thus far. And uh, I think it's really exciting. And I think there's a lot of healing that uh, we all are capable of, even though we're told that sometimes you can't heal from it. I think that's preposterous. Um, I really feel that there's such a fine line between being a saint and a sinner <laughs> in this world. And it's really up to us to dig deep, especially into our childhood wounds. Um, the more I learn, the more I understand that's where the answers are, you know. You know, once you, once you look into it, and especially if you, if you study childhood development at all, um, because as far as I understand, the most recent research indicates that a huge, frightening majority of a child's personality is developed at the age of three before they can really even speak. And then the, the, basically the, the foundation is set by three years of age and about three quarters of the rest of the personality is developed by seven years of age. And the rest of it is just experience. So you are the person you are going to be or the person you're going to have to struggle your way out of is set in your being by seven years old. I would encourage everybody to look that up and learn more about it because it's really important. You know, your most of our behaviors are subconscious behaviors. 90% of our behaviors are subconscious behaviors. And if you want to change anything about yourself, you will need to go inside. <laughs> you will need to go inside and you will need to go to your parents. And if they are not around, might I suggest DMT? <laughs> There's only one way out of this. <laughs> so that's all I have for now trying to you know stay a little bit lighthearted about it because that's all you can do um, if you have any questions or nice comments let me know and uh, I hope this content is useful and I hope to put more out in the future thanks so much for watching have a great day thanks so much for watching to contribute to my work directly please go to my Facebook page Lizzie Cole Lapiana and hit the little dollar sign button in messenger